Well, hello there, Eric Griffith here with Griptastic Industries, and today we're gonna to figure out the best way to play media on the BenQ interactive flat panel display. We're gonna start with a list of expectations for it being the best way to play media as well. The first thing is it has to be reliable. Second, it's gotta be quick. And then lastly, it's gotta be comfortable, meaning you know with confidence you can go up there and plug in a cable or wirelessly do what you need to do and have the faith and confidence that it's going to work for you every single time, all right? So those are my options or rules for it being the best way to do it. Not to say that this BenQ board can't do everything on the list, but I'm looking for the best way for us as educators to do it, all right? So the first option, and we have four options that we can do this, is through HDMI. And through HDMI, it's kind of an older cable. You've probably seen this on the back of your televisions or VCRs or uh, DVD players or your kids' Nintendo or PlayStation uh, gaming solutions. HDMI has been around for a while, and it is only capable of passing through video and audio. All right, so if you wanna look for a cable and you have a laptop that supports that, that that's gonna work well for you every single time, get an HDMI cable and plug that into the side of your laptop and the board, and that will work just fine. Let's take a look at what that looks like. All right, so the, again, HDMI, it's kind of a trapezoidal connection on the end. When you plug it into the front of the board, which you can see right there, um, I've got a picture of the front of the board, just plugs right in on the front, and then you can plug that into the side of your laptop as well and it should start up and make that connection for you automatically. So the BenQ board's really neat in the fact that when you turn it on, if it's not already connected to the HDMI source, maybe it pops up to the um, Android operating system first, it's gonna display that first, and then as soon as you plug it in, it'll detect a new source and switch over to that. Now, I've already got mine plugged into my board on my setup here, so I'll have to manually change the connection over. So let me show you how to do that, okay? I've already plugged in my HDMI, I've got it connected to the front, and I wanna play me some Magic School Bus, all right? So what I can do is click on my BenQ remote, or I can go up to the screen and tap, but I'm gonna click on my BenQ remote, and then it's gonna pop up and say, hey, what do you wanna select? I'm gonna scroll down, choose the Android option, and then I'm gonna go over to HDMI. HDMI is that very first port or plug on the front of the board. And then I'll click the OK button. And then within two or three seconds, five seconds really on mine, because I have some different equipment set up that allows me to record all this. But on yours, it'll be instantaneous. It'll click over right away. And you'll see that your BenQ board and your laptop are displaying the same options. Now, if it doesn't, if your BenQ board just shows your background, then it is extending the desktop. You want to mirror your desktop in order to do that. So for you, you can hit Windows and P on your laptop, and on your laptop, uh, if this is a Windows laptop, it pops up, and uh, if I zoom in on my laptop and show you, it gives you the option to do the PC screen only, duplicate the screen, extend the screen, or just display the second one. I've got mine set to duplicate, which is why it's duplicating right now, all right? So if I jump back down, it's displaying. Now the reason I like this option the best it's pretty quick, you just plug in two cables and it works. It's very reliable, as long as your cable is not busted, right? And you'll be able to tell if your cable's broken because the end uh, connection will be angled and broken like that. These are just consumable cables. Go ask your technology department for another cable or go take your neighbors while they're not there, right? They're fine with it, they don't, they don't know anybody or anyway, they haven't seen this video yet, all right? So these cables are very inexpensive and easy to get. All right, so what you wanna do is get that connection going and I'm gonna play it just to show you. I can't play very much of this video because YouTube will take down this for me pirating uh, Magic School Bus here. So I'm gonna hit play, but what I want you to do is notice how the two videos are in sync, okay? So notice, that's pretty quick, right? Yep, so the two videos are in sync. There's no lag with the video, okay? Now I've got it playing out of my laptop right now, but normally when you plug it in, it'll detect and say, hey, let's play it out of the, the BenQ down there. Um, I have a video that walks you through step-by-step -step how to do troubleshooting for sound. That seems to be another issue uh, in using the BenQ boards. A lot of teachers don't understand how the sound works out of their laptop 
and there's a couple of different settings they want to do. So I'm linking that video right down here below so that you can take a look at that um, and that should help you troubleshoot it. Okay, so that's the best way for me to play this because it allows me to quickly go up. I'm, uh, it's reliable and it's comfortable. I already know how to go into my laptop and play exactly what I want to do. Okay, so that works the best for me. That being said, if we jump back to our list, we've got some other options. I have the ability to use USB-C. So let's jump over to USB-C. If you look over here in my picture, that's another cable in the front of the board. The deal with that is it also allows you to play audio and video, just like HDMI, but it adds a third option. That third option is touch. So all three options are rolled into one. If we jump back here, you'll notice that I didn't mention USB just yet, okay? So if you want to build the ability to touch the board and interact with it as well, you have to have USB connected with HDMI. So it's one option is HDMI and USB. The other option is USB-C. All three of those things, audio, video, and touch, go through one cable. So it's one or the other. The reason I say it's optional here is it depends on what you're doing in the classroom. If you're just going to go up there and play a video uh, for the time of your class period or a couple of snippets, you might be able to get away with just hitting the button on your laptop. Okay, But if you're an active teacher who's walking around and, and doing different things, you can then go ahead and plug in USB and that allows you to go up and touch and manipulate the board as well, maybe even annotate over it if you're showing content that needs some annotation over it. So kind of a neat option. USB-C takes care of that, puts all three options, audio, video, and touch into one. Now, there's an asterisk by this one because USB-C is not created equally. There are different cables with different settings, or I'm sorry, different parameters, different versions. And laptops themselves have different versions of USB-C. Just because it says USB-C, that doesn't mean it's the same all across the board. So there are different specs. So your mileage may vary. The cable that came with our BenQ, uh, it works okay with our low-end uh, Chromebooks. On our high-end Chromebooks, it tends to uh, drop signal and drop audio, okay? So I've bought different cables and uh, more expensive cables that are around $20 or $30 a piece. That seems to work a little better. In addition, that cable is very small. It can easily be snapped off if you leave that cable stuck to the front of the board all the time. Okay, so that's one of my tips here is if you are somebody who travels from classroom to classroom, maybe carry a USB cable uh, with you. And if you have a Chromebook or a laptop and you plug it in and you only need to display a few things at a time, a presentation or something like that, that's a great use for the USB-C cable. But I, again, I've had teachers report to me that it shows lag um, on the on the video and the audio side when they plug just directly in there. So if we had higher end laptops and we had higher end cables, this would be fixed, but most likely the stuff in your school might not support it um, for video. Again, when I say supporting media, I'm talking about video that you're either streaming or a recording playing off of the laptop, all right? Not to say that it doesn't work, I'm just saying that it's not going to work the best and the most reliably. I encourage you to try these out on your own and see which one works best for you, though, all right? So back up to our other options, you also have the ability to wirelessly broadcast and share your screen up there. Got another video linked down below or up above, wherever it appears for your version of YouTube, that walks you through step-by-step -step how to wirelessly broadcast your screen up to your BenQ. Just to show you what that looks like though, on my end, I've already got my BenQ up there, and if I want to wirelessly broadcast something up there, I'm gonna show my laptop first, I'm gonna minimize this, and I'm gonna go to my BenQ InstaShare app. I'm gonna disconnect it first, because I had it connected before to test and make sure it worked. I'm gonna select on my board, and then I'm gonna hit start broadcasting. So I'm gonna show both these here, and even though I'm mirroring the screen through HDMI already, you'll be able to see an immediate difference between what's up on the screen now and what the wireless version looks like. So I'm going to click Start Broadcasting, and within a couple of seconds, it looks a little different. The color is a little bit muted, and if I bring up the Magic School Bus, you can see there that white is just a little bit different as well. So the colors are a bit muted in InstaShare, 
In addition, I'm going to play the, the video as well. And what I want you to look at is the delay in the wireless that's going to and from it. So I'm going to click play. And you notice there's just a little bit of lag, okay? Now, that might not bother you, um, but if your kids are watching this intently and it starts to lag and buffer, they're going to become impatient. And they are, uh, due to this generation of children, they're not going to be happy and you'll be receiving a comment card on your performance for that day. All right. So the deal is if you have good Wi-Fi in your school, you most likely can get this to work and it's just a hair off and it doesn't bother anybody. But if you're like my school, uh, we've got some issues with our Wi-Fi. Um, we're waiting due to supply chain issues uh, to support this. It's already ordered. It's already paid for. We just need to get it in and get it uh, set up. It's just going to be a while. All right. So for us right now, using HDMI is the best option. Okay. So there's some other ways to do this with wireless. I have an entire series of videos that show you how to connect with an iPad, with a MacBook, with a uh, Chromebook, and any other tablets and devices like that. Different ways, not just with InstaShare, because the BenQ is a Swiss army knife of presentation tools that supports a ton of different wireless protocols that allow you to do just about anything, which is why it's my favorite device uh, in a classroom, okay? So the last option on the list has to do with using the built-in browser on the board. Now, if I jump back over to my BenQ, I'm gonna jump over to that, and you can see that I am wirelessly broadcasting my screen up there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop on my uh, on my PC now and that will stop broadcasting it and it will go back to HDMI okay so I am going to switch back over from HDMI to the Android screen okay I'm gonna click that gear again on my laptop click the down button and then click uh, Android right there and that's gonna take me back to my screen now if you notice my background looks different it's no longer space related that's because I've logged in with my BenQ account if you don't have a BenQ account, your tech person or whomever set up your board should have sent you an email that allows you to set that up. Got a link again down below that walks you through step-by-step -step how to create a BenQ account. But spoiler alert, if they never sent you an email in the first place, you got to start with them, okay? So I'm going to use my remote, and this is a tip or trick in another video, and I'm going to use it as a mouse. I'm going to click my pointer option, which is in the upper right-hand corner, and you can see that my BenQ remote is now a pointer. But it's kind of cool. It's also a wireless mouse. So I'm going to click on my web browser that's built into my BenQ. Yours might be Firefox. Mine just happens to be Chrome. I'm going to click on that, and then I have the ability to go to a website and browse video. So for us, this works great in some folks' classrooms because they're close enough to an access point not a lot of other people are using the access point at the time, so they can easily click on a video and play it and stream it, and there's little to no lag, all right? With other folks, that isn't the same um, issue, all right? They have uh, poor Wi-Fi in their classrooms, and it's laggy because your BenQ board is just a ginormous tablet, all right? A ginormous Android tablet that you can browse the web and do different things on. But the benefit of this is you can go through and use this as a standalone device. You don't need to tie up your laptop in order to use the board. You can just have the board dedicated to do what you need to do, okay? Now, here's the, the asterisk that comes with this is, again, if you don't have good Wi-Fi in your classroom, it's not the best use case, but it doesn't qualify for the best use for me in my school because it is reliable. If you know how to get in and, and do that, you can get there quickly um, with, with under 10 seconds, okay? But it might not be comfortable for you. You need to have some practice um, opening up your, your BenQ uh, apps, logging into the BenQ, have your links ready-made right there. So it is a separate device other than your laptop that you're going to need to learn how to use and master. Now, in my school, that's a good thing. We call that skill building, right? If you're knowledgeable on using this application, you're only going to get better and faster with it the more you use it. So I encourage it. But for right now, uh, it depends on whether you have good wireless in your classroom or not. All right. So there are the top four ways that you can play media on there. But the hands down absolute best is HDMI.
All right. So if you like this video, go ahead, give me a thumbs up and a subscription would be appreciated as well. And if you have any question, post them in the comments and I'll get to them. And I hope that you have a griftastic day. Thanks.